come on, we can do better than that. Hello, Germany, how are we doing? Exactly what I'm talking about. So we ha we've had some panels on stage. We have a few more left for you. I know you're very excited. As always, you know that we have a microphone on your right hand side. So if you have questions, you can line up and get your questions in. I have some questions for our guests, but of course, you know, they are dying to answer all of your questions. They want to interact with you. So make sure you get prepared and get everything in. Make sure you go to your photo shoots and your signings and your meet and greets. And for now, get ready for our next panel. Ladies and gentlemen, make a lot of noise for Lucy Martin! Ships and Clive, I'm not gonna ask you how you're doing, because I already know. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Lucy, how are you doing? How's Germany treating you so far? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Happy to be here. It's great to have you back again here, and uh, I mean, we're, we're all big big fans of the show, big fans of all of you, and, and anytime we can get you here, it's, it's a pleasure for us. So thanks for being here. Now, I've opened up uh, the panel to audience questions, so occasionally someone will line up and, and get their questions in, but I really quickly want to dive into that world that, that Clive and I were talking about earlier, about Vikings, the whole um, well, world around it. The show has ended, but it's still very much alive. I mean, with conventions like this, but also during the pandemic, it found a new audience. Uh, what's it like for you as an actor to kind of like complete something, but still be so intrinsically involved in it? Uh, yeah, I mean, from shooting it to it actually airing, I think it was like a year and a half or nearly two years until I saw my first episode. Um, so yeah, there was like quite a delay on it and it was weird having like going through something and not being able to tell anyone about it. Um, <laughs> to then it coming out and I'd almost, I could remember what I did, but then when you watch it back, it like, it brings it all, I guess it brings it all back, but um, uh, yeah, it's like reliving it all over again. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, um, um, Clive, you were in like the very beginning, you leave the show, but that's when Ingrid, of course, uh, comes into the show in season six, I think, uh, immediately at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a dual part for both of you. What's it like, you know, to leave at that point, knowing there's so much more to come and for you to come into something that's like, uh, well, you're, you're a real newcomer into this already established world, of course. Yeah, it's terrifying. Not terrifying, but, you know, uh, watching the show and seeing how successful it is and how great all the actors are, you, there's like a certain level that you have to, you know, strive for. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty nerve-wracking, but also you feel really lucky to be in that sort of position. So. I kind of like the feeling as well, being in the beginning, and then when I left, um, to see the show go on with the sons and when more characters came in and the world expanded and then when Lucy came in, um, I watched from afar and I saw the show gather momentum. And then there's a part of you going, oh, because when, when you're at the beginning, it's kind of like that bubbling, bu bubbling feeling where people are finding a show and then it started to find its feet and then you left and then it went <laughs> and became this massive show that it is now. Uh, and that was great to watch, but then because of the COVID pandemic, a lot of people kind of found it in that little bubble that they were in as well. And I suddenly had people come up to me going, you're in Vikings again. And it's like, I've left like four years ago. And it's like, <laughs> but they're like, I'm on season one. And you know, you're a horrible, nasty prick. Um, but that was, it was lovely because it found that the new audience was finding it again and again. So I got to go relive it twice, which was really interesting. And, and that's the thing, like the, the dynamic of, um not a single character in, in that show, I mean, I guess like real life is, is entirely good or entirely bad and you had a, a span of five seasons where you could grow that character. You had to do that in, in the span of one season. Um, coming in, did you know, Lucy, um, where your character was going in season six? Um, no, I had no idea. I was, I was uh, contracted for eight episodes only. Um, 
and I only, uh, one hour audition, it was just my opening scenes, which you obviously see in the beginning of season six. Uh, and, then I, and then I think I ended up doing 18. Yeah. Um, so every time we got the script through, I was nervous because I obviously <laughs> didn't know what was, what was gonna happen. And it was like everyone was being, you know, everyone was dying. So it was that thing of like reading through the script, seeing whether or not I was dead. Um, and somehow I managed to stay alive. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not very into the uh, the original lore of Vikings, so I'm not sure whether Ingrid was, I think it's an original character for the show, right? It wasn't necessarily a, um, an established character. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. So then you never know where it's going. Yeah, although there is, there is, there is a queen called Ingrid. Um, but it's of a different time, so it's, you know, how uh, it's slightly, yeah. But there was a queen, queen called Ingrid. Your character kind of won Vikings, in a way, like everybody died. <laughs> and she's the last one, so the last one standing. All the old yeah. queen, right? Yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, Matt. so, if you have questions, make sure you line up. I just want to tell you guys uh, real quick. And totally unrelated to Vikings, but one of the conventions that we also do here in Germany is called Weekend of Health. And I was talking to Alyssa about this because she just started in a horror film, but you also have a connection with horror, with The Seed, of course. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience in horror? Because it's... I, it must be challenging to be... Uh, I think it's very physical as well, but in a different way. Yeah. What do you think about the horror <laughs> genre and starring in a film that, you know, scares a lot of people? Yeah. This is a weird film, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, weird. Yeah, a lot of black goo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, horror is a lot of fun, actually, because um, it's so, I don't know, it's so extreme. I mean, in the, in the seed, uh, the three girls basically get impregnated with an alien. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then obviously I then become pregnant with an alien and then kind of become the monster. Uh, yeah, so you should watch it. <laughs> no, it's a weird film. Yeah, it's, yeah, um, it's wild. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there were, I mean, there were times when we were on the floor and obviously we were like about to give birth, but you're having to, it's very physical, put it yeah. that way. <laughs> it's very physical. And uh, uh, Clive, do you enjoy watching horror movies or... Uh... <laughs> I am. I've seen the scene. It's awesome. Okay, good. Um, I, I'm a weird one. I don't like the kind of the blood and gore kind of horror films. I mean, this is weird saying coming from an actor who was in Vikings, which is full of blood <laughs> and gore. But it's about. I just like to leave some of the imagination. It kind of tends to make me laugh when I kind of realise it's just CGI or it's just you know it's obviously fake. I'm much more of a, a fan of like The Shining and things like that. Like slow psychological thrillers where it's left to your imagination what's going on. Yeah. And um, it's, it's great to have you both here on stage because uh, um, you, you both come from a world of, of not just film but theater, dancing, um, um, a lot of qualities. Um, what has been your, your journey, so I'll, I'll start with you Lucy, what has been your journey from like wanting to become an actress or to the path of an actress all the way from the beginning? Do you know like what the first moment was, I'm going to go through this <laughs> career of entertainment. Yeah, okay. yeah. um, well, I always knew that, that, that I wanted to be an actress, but I also wanted to be a pop star, and I also <laughs> wanted to be a dancer and a hairdresser. So Dream big. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't become a hairdresser just yet, although I try. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so I always wanted to do all those, uh, I always wanted to do this, but I think, I mean, I started off in theatre, um, I went to a performing arts school and yeah, I started off in theatre in 2000, uh, 2011 um, in a show called Dirty Dancing in London and then I went on to do uh, Mamma Mia and Jersey Boys and, and then I decided that I wanted to move towards TV and film and um, did a few jobs and then got Vikings. So that was like the progression. Um, yeah, but I, I always knew that it was what I was going to do, I guess. Get into film, yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't think I've asked you this question before, but what was your journey into, uh, you know, um, becoming an actor? Yeah, I mean, I, I always wanted to be a helicopter pilot when I was a kid. And it was not like a normal helicopter pilot, I wanted to be like a patchy helicopter uh. pilot. I just didn't want to blow people up. I kind of like the idea of flying those helicopters, but I didn't really want to press the missile button. 
Uh, so then I suppose I could end up being an actor, I could pretend to do it and not actually kill anyone. Um, but I was, I was the British champion of Muay Thai boxing. I was a big martial artist and, and I didn't see acting in my, in my future at all. But when I, when I had a great teacher, I had a great teacher who literally pointed me in the right direction and said if I take acting seriously then I'm, you know, I'm worth investing in. And I've always been one of those people if someone sees the star and the, you know, sometimes the parent isn't the person that sees the star and the kid is someone else in their life and I, I'm very lucky to have a couple of teachers that really pushed me. And I went to drama school and done, but I always thought I'd just do theatre. I never, you know, I thought TV and film was the kind of, you see Tom Cruise in the movies, you know, like, that's a different thing, I'm never going to get there. And then it just happens, and you just keep working, and, and you know, so, yeah. And I suppose it's all come full, full circle, because the other thing I did when I was, when I talked about Muay Thai, I used to be in a stunt team, when I'd joust and sword fight and do all the stuff at Sherwood Forest where Robin Hood's from. I suppose I ended up, one of the biggest shows that I'm known for is, is included all of those things. So, if anything, I was actually just getting that kind of like toolbox together in order to play a Viking. Amazing, and that brings us uh, to two Vikings. Um, I mean, we've in the past we've talked a lot about the physical challenges of shooting it, but also the fun that it brings with it. Um, um, aside from the physicality, what what was the most challenging thing for you, Lucy, to uh, to shoot? Is there a particular scene that stands out which you thought, "Wow, that was intense"? Um. I had quite a few, because okay. I mean there was, there was quite a few emotional scenes that I had. Um, uh, probably my, my scene with Peter Franzen was a pretty intense scene. Um, yeah. And that was, that was pretty tough, um, like emotionally. But um, I mean there was, it, going back to the beginning when I first entered the show, there was a bit where I was swim, swimming in the lake. In, um, and it was hailing at the time, so it was freezing. Um, and I'm in, I'm in, I'm completely naked, apart from it's like being my bits covered up. Um, <laughs> and but yeah, I remember it hailing, and I remember them saying submerge into the water to swim. And I just remember my body not going down. Like I was like, okay, and action, <laughs> and action. Any minute now, I'm gonna swim. And my body, yeah, and I was like, keep working. Um, yeah, but physically, that weirdly was what I found really difficult. But and then it was fine. Then once you're in, you're all right. But yeah. What's the toughest scene you have to shoot? By? So Ingrid got to dance naked on the beach. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. See, even Lucy got to dance naked on the beach. So I was saying he's been talking I never about got to dance naked minutes. on the beach. I wasn't naked. My bum never graced the screen of Vikings, <laughs> even though it was on the cutting room floor somewhere. Hey, there's still time. <laughs> there's still time. Would we want to see that? Rollo dancing naked? <laughs> Legally, legally, um, lucky. <laughs> legally, um, no, so, um, I'm not sure how much you're allowed to talk about upcoming projects, but I think you both have some stuff in uh, pre or post production. Uh, a title that you're both attached to as well, I think. Uh, um, yeah, and Peter Franson as well. We did a movie called oh, Boudicca. Um, we filmed it in England. Um, it's about Boudicca, you know, the, the warrior um, Celt who um, did her best to get the Romans out of Britain. And a lot of people think because of her um, ability to fight and raise an army and not give up against the Romans, even though she was eventually killed and, and the Romans never really left Britain, they did actually kind of give up and think this tiny little island isn't worth all of the death. So she was an incredible, you know, warrior woman, warrior queen. Of the Iceni tribe. Um, so Olga Kulienko plays um, plays Boudica and Lucy and I. Uh, I play Olga's husband in it, and um, Lucy's this badass Iceni warrior. Um, yeah, we haven't seen any of it yet. We finished it. Peter was in it, and um, we're just waiting to see what's yeah you know, how when it's edited together. Yeah. So it's still early days. But we're doing ADR, so we'll see it soon. Oh wow! Yeah. And I mean, this this isn't a coincidence. I think you you uh, are you producing it together, or is this a, a an I don't know with so many people attached from the Vikings, like Peter as well. Um, how did you come up with this idea to to make this film? Um, well, um, Jesse Johnson, the director, actually Peter was attached first, I think, and he came up to me and he was just like. <laughs> do, 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 
you want to do, do you want to do something? I never got to do any scenes with Peter. <laughs> this was the irony. I never got to do any scenes with Peter. I think Peter wow. Franson is a brilliant actor. I love him dearly. And then I went, oh, Boudicca, I'll finally get to do something with Peter. I do the first six days filming, fly back to LA, Peter arrives on the sixth day and film, so we never got to share any scenes together. So yet again, I've done another thing with Peter and never got to share the screen with him. Well, actually, I did do some great scenes in Vikings with him, but I, never, I think he's a great actor. I would have liked to have worked with Peter more. Thanks. Um, it is interesting, like Vikings, uh, kind of like the world of Game of Thrones. Um, when, when we as fans watch it, we just go from scene to scene and we watch it as a whole. For you all, it's an immense world and sometimes you don't even get to uh, play opposite someone who's either on the same season or, or you know. Um, are there any people that you met through conventions that were on the show but you've never uh, seen on set? Like yeah, for like you, it's each, each other, we didn't know, yeah. You want to hear a story? Shoot. <laughs> I know we got to work with this lady on Vikings. I met her here. We met here at a convention 11 months ago. We're now very much in love. And we're engaged. Yeah! What did you say? We're engaged. What did you say? There you go. So I just want to, the reason why I say is I, I thank you because the reason why I bring it up, the reason why I share that with you, because no one really knows. Um, is that I always think that conventions bring everyone together. And you guys think you come here and you, and you get to be with like-minded people and you get to share the shows you love, whether it be Vikings or Vampire Diaries, whatever it is. But we now have our own convention story. You know, we wouldn't have met each other if it wasn't for Germany, and Vikings Con, and the German Comic Con, so thank you. I don't know how to follow this up. This is great news. I mean, congratulations on behalf of the entire, you know, German Comic Con organization, on behalf of the fan base. Um, it's it's amazing that you have this story, and and we get to be a small part of it with you. So thanks for that, and congratulations. So how great to see that dynamic soon in, in Boudicca, in that film. I mean, that's, uh, like you said, you're starring as husband and wife in that film. Oh, no, I'll, I'll oh, oh, I thought I heard yeah, you say... Yeah, we actually don't, we don't oh. film together. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Oh, too bad. <laughs> but, but maybe, who knows what projects are, are coming up. So, we have a few more minutes, and I, okay. I just want to end it with uh, uh, a Vikings-related uh, thing, and uh, we, we've talked a bit about pranks with, with Clive. Um, I don't know your funniest story on set. Did you have fun in season six? Were there any moments where you thought, like, guys, we need to work, we need to focus? Uh, kind of, but I mean, I, you, have, you have moments where you sort of, you, you're suddenly in, like, you're, you've got the giggles and you can't stop laughing. And that happened a few times. Um, but I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I, I like not that I can not that I can recall because it was so long ago. I can't think of yeah. like a really funny moment. Um, no, but giggles are the worst. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm oh, sorry. It's the same when Travis died. It all just all the pranks just it all got really serious. <laughs> <laughs> Too serious. Yeah. No. Hey. I really again want to congratulate you. I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to invite you back on stage in, in about two and a half hours. We're going to do a closing ceremony with everyone and we're going to take a photo with all of you and the fans. Um, but again, thanks so much for being here and I'm hoping to see you again in the near future. Thank you. Uh, on three, say congratulations. One, two, three. Congratulations, guys. Give it up for Lucy and So let's do the murder.